Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos Podcast with your hosts, Jason Shellcross and Alex Krobe. Let's go! <laughs> I just We haven't even started yet. Why are you laughing already? Uh, I think I'm going to fade out of the yelling let's go every episode. I don't know. like Why? No, I think people look forward to that. Yeah, yeah, you think? You look forward to listening to me yell? Yeah, I, I, when I listen back every time, like the music comes in and then all of a sudden it's just you yelling at me and I kind of like it. Let's go. Oh, well, that doesn't, it doesn't have the same effect no, you, when the music's Yeah, you playing. need the music under it. Yeah. My bad. I, that was probably awful for everybody. I'm sorry about your ears. So, uh, Alex, it's been a minute. You, as our resident sack daddy, I feel like I'm obligated to do a check-in. How are things at home? How is the how how is the child? Oh, my child's great. Uh, she had like a lip tie slash tongue tie, so we had to have that get like lasered off. So she's been miserable for like the last week. I don't know what that um, means, but it sounds terrible. Oh, so like underneath, like if you're watching this on YouTube, like underneath, like you know how there's like the little like thing that connects to your gum. Yeah, that that thing like, right there. Yeah, from like the like your skin. Well, basically your skin to your like gums. gums. Right. So so that was tight. And then also she had a tongue tie, which is the exact same thing underneath your tongue that like goes up to the roof of your mouth. Yeah, right. that thing. And so they like cut both of them. And so what they have to do or what my wife does, I don't do this, but she like has to rub it every day. And then, oh, hold on. Work interrupting things here. It's 930 at night and work's calling me. Um, so if you rub, if you rub this, you have to massage it and like stretch it. Otherwise it'll like reform together after like four hours. So that's what we've been dealing with. Wow. Um, also, I, I told you I had a joke before we started. Yes, you did. And you, you made, you made mention of my ears bleeding and that's oh, what no. my ears were doing after listening to the presidential debate last night. Um, oh, that's what I was assuming we were actually going to talk about today. Um, and I, I was, I actually have a question t for you about the debate, Jason, is who do you think the master debater was last night? Oh my God. Wallace. <laughs> <laughs> How's that for an answer? Oh man. I don't know. You didn't, didn't, didn't want to, didn't want to hammer my master debater. Uh, the only master debater Learn. I hammer is I'm not even I know. Nope. All right. Nothing. Let's get to this week's games. Uh, We're keeping it PG 18. Terrible. Here. Yeah, I was going to say, what at what point do we have to put like a uh, a disclaimer like explicit rating? Yeah. Next to our, our I podcast. Know. I think drops. if we sing the baby shark to do to do theme song enough, it brings the age back down. So we'll be OK. But OK, so. So I, I will not say baby shark. I will say baby shark. I got it. <laughs> We're full of gold. This is like one and a half, two minutes of perfect shtick right now. This is wonderful. All right. And let's now, get into some actual. And now we have. To, yeah, we have to talk about what on thursday night football yuck yeah okay but we're, so, we're not talking about that quite yet but i don't want to i just please let's talk about anything other than the thursday night game well let's just get through it you already brought it up we're here it's our weekend preview uh, show we'll talk about the mess going on in the league once we when we get to the the first game they're yeah, actually true. They're, they're pretty much back to back so it, it works um Yep. Our Thursday night game. So this is our Thursday podcast for anybody new to the podcast or show. We preview all of Welcome, welcome after that. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We preview all of the weekend's games and uh, we talk th through basically everything you should be looking through from fantasy football. We try to hit on as many relevant players as we can and uh, not make you sit and listen to us for two hours. So, yeah, at that, let's dive into Thursday. Uh, Broncos at Jets for the Broncos. You got Rippy and starting, um, <laughs> rip to Rippy. And I mean, you got Philip Lindsay coming back. Really? That's the only thing I'm interested in is what that offense looks like. If 
Melvin Gordon keeps that stranglehold on the job or is, is Lindsay actually going to have any sort of meaningful role? I think he will. Um, I just not sure how much work he'll get in his first game back. But for the Jets, I wrote down blah in all caps. So, yep. Uh, don't don't care. Phil Brinsley did have seven carries the first week before he got hurt. Uh, can Noah Fant continue to keep it up? What does Jerry Judy look like? Will his you know, now that they're not playing really good defenses every week here, the Jets are not a good defense. So I would hope that maybe you're looking at Jerry Judy to do a little bit better um, and is potentially playable this week. You have to continue to start Noah Fant. He's the third ranked tight end and has exceeded all expectations. As yeah. far as the Jets go, I want to see if I, I, I just want to know, is Jamison Crowder going to play? I think if Jamison Crowder plays, I think you have to start him. I don't think Denver's defense is good. That's the only weapon that Sammy D has to throw to you. Uh, and after his week one explosion, I know he's been hampered by a hamstring. He's been limited in practice. But I think if he plays, I think you have to start him. Yeah. The only other thing I'm semi interested in is uh, does Bortles finally make his return? Like, can somebody breathe some life into this offense? Um, yeah. Man, rough. He might. I but but at the same time, I I don't even want to try to guess at that. So no, no there, not there's at like all. three three players maybe you're starting in this game, and it's yeah, Fant, to, and, and it's Judy, dirty. and it's yeah, right. you're not starting. Well, you could start Frank Gore and hope he falls in the end zone. There you go, twenty two carries for sixty five yards. Good old Frank. Yeah. All right, moving into our Sunday games. Our first up, we have Saints at Lions. For the Saints, he got the return of Michael Thomas. Fantastic news for everybody. Is he actually playing? I think so. Um, outside of that, you have... Uh, it's fantastic news for, for the offense. Not so great news for Alvin Kamara and his targets. Can I walk you through these, uh, these target leaders? Um, week one... Please. Week one, Alvin Kamara had eight targets. Week two, he had nine. This past week, he had 14 targets. <laughs> Target share leaders. Alvin Kamara. Running back Alvin Kamara is third in targets in the NFL currently. Who are the two people ahead of him? Oh, boy. Um... I would have said Darren Waller, but he didn't do anything this week. Um, is Calvin Ridley one of them? DeAndre is one. Keenan Allen okay. is at number two. Really? In okay. target share. Yep. DeAndre Hopkins has 37% target share. Keenan Allen, 33%. Kamara is at 31% target share <laughs> as a running back. Oh, Drew Brees and that wow. noodle arm. Gotta love to see it. <clears throat> and then for the Lions. He looks so he looks so good the other night. It was crazy how good he looked. Drew Brees? No, I'm saying Kamara. Like oh. he was like what was he go? If you I think before the season everybody was like, if you don't have one of the top three picks, you're like, who do you take? Um and it was clearly that Kamara should have been in the top three picks. Yeah. I feel I feel a little vindicated because I said man he could be a top two he could easily finish as the rb1 if he stays healthy he just had health issues last year um that's yeah, true let's move over to the lions uh not nearly as exciting you have kenny g back last week obviously still not healthy uh he did have seven targets six catches 57 and a touchdown solid return you know 13 fantasy points in that realm the running back situation I just want to stay away from. Did you know that DeAndre Swift, this is a fun stat of the week. I've got like all the little interesting stat little of the week. factoids. Fantasy football factoids. Um, DeAndre Swift has one more rushing attempt than Bobby Trees. <laughs> Are you serious? One more rushing attempt than Robert Woods. Yes. DeAndre Swift. But don't Lost. worry. Go go draft him in the sixth round. He's a great. Yep. Great draft. Take those player. Detroit Lion running backs. Mm, forever tasty. and always. Are you looking for anything out of Detroit? It's stay away from the RBs. Hopefully Kenny G's good, right? 
Yeah, I want to see what Stafford can start doing. We we think that he has a top five upside, although I don't know if he has a top five upside anymore with all the rushing yards that some of these quarterbacks are getting. But um, if staff like I'm looking for Stafford to start ascending back into being a top eight quarterback with Kenny Kenny G around, I think the Cardinals have a relatively OK offense and he put up his highest points for the year uh, in week three against the Cardinals. Kenny Galladay is still really, really good. Try to get him if just fire trades at Kenny Galladay because I still think he's a top five wide receiver going forward. The most important thing is he has to stay healthy. If he stays healthy, I like that offense a lot. Yeah, everybody. I mean, just remember uh, before Stafford got hurt last year, he was averaging more than 20 points a week through eight weeks. So he has all the skill and weapons to get it done. He just needs to execute. So and we'll think see. about what Alan Lazard just did to New Orleans defense. Mm-hmm. And Kenny Galladay is considerably better than Alan Lazard. Sure is. Let's move on to uh, Chargers Buccaneers. Chargers, this this offense, how much fun does it look with Justin freaking Herbert? Like the fantasy points are a plenty for the skill positions. Uh, Keenan Allen up to wide receiver 12. So he's now a wide receiver one. That 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 quarterback change completely changed Keenan Allen's outlook. Uh, had 19 targets this past week. Caught 13 balls for 136 and a score against the Panthers. Wow. Granted, it's against the Bucks this week, not the Panthers. So... I think Keenan Allen's value is at like an all time high for the season. I think once they actually start playing defenses, you'll see, Ke- you know, that offense come back to earth a little bit. The best thing that happened to Keenan Allen this year was a doctor puncturing his quarterbacks along. That's pretty pathetic um, and just overall <laughs> very sad. I will point to the Chargers playoff schedule, though. Week one's home against Atlanta and Atlanta's defense sucks from a passing perspective. It's at Las Vegas. They're middle of the road from a passing defense. And then week 16 against Denver um, back in SoFi Stadium. So it's in a dome. You're going to have a controlled environment that last week. Um, Keenan Allen could be like, especially if Herbert continues to be his quarterback. um, He's he's great. Uh, Eckler's producing currently running back eight uh we i think we're just surprised by this offense's effectiveness so far hunter henry's 10 um their defense is still really good and as long as they can move the ball they're gonna put up points yeah 100 percent. i mean eckler running back eight i just can't believe that 11 targets 11 catches for 84 receiving last week at the, as a running back like He's a surefire RB one in this offense as long as Herbert is quarterback. So yeah, they got a sorry, mess. Sorry, Go Tyrod, but but fantasy owners of like I don't have a single Charger player on any of my team because I was assuming that Tyrod was going to be the quarterback all year, and I was wrong. Shocker. Do you think they did lose to the Panthers? Do you think that Tyrod comes back and gets the gig back? No chance. It'll be interesting. Um, and then for the Bucks, they're two and one, but man, are they kind of hurting and kind of look like a marginal two and one team? Uh, Godwin is out until at least week six with that hammy in- in- injury, excuse me, hamstring injury. And then you have Evans last week, two catches for two yards and two touchdowns. I don't know what that's about. It's not great. Hmm. Um, and then Fournette or Jones, Fournette exploded week two, had a down week, week three. It's just but it sounds like Fournette might not even play this week based on what they're saying. He injured his ankle. And if that's the case, then Ronald Jones fire him up and, and go get him. But this offense is kind of a mess right now. Like, yeah. are, are, are you going to start starting Scotty Miller at all? Because Godwin's no. out. I, it's there's not a lot of like appetizing things about this offense right now. And it's against the Chargers. They have two of the better cornerbacks in the league. So I'm not. Not about it. Um, yeah, I if uh, if my guy Leo Fournette does not play, Ronald Jones, I think is a top fifteen guy this week. Uh, 
it's just all about them splitting carries and they diminish each other's value so much you can't play them if, if they're both healthy. Yep. Moving on, Jaguars at the Bengals. Ah, Jacksonville Jaguars. James Robinson currently running back five. Running backs with more <laughs> PPR points than James Robinson. Alvin Kamara, Aaron Jones, Ezekiel Elliott, and Dalvin Cook. That's the list. Those are that's pretty good. Not bad company for a UDFA out of Illinois State who got nothing but hate from the fantasy community. Uh yeah. I don't know. No, he would he was not hated on. He was just an unknown. To be honest with you, what I'm really upset about is that this just isn't Leonard Fournette. He would have been probably running back four instead of running back five. That's an di- entirely different topic. When it comes to James Robinson, I have him ranked as the third <laughs> overall flex play this week. Uh, I mean, he was great last week, and he has an even better matchup this week uh, going on the road at Cincinnati, who's currently giving up the second most rushing yards uh, in the NFL. Um, they are giving up 181 yards on the ground a week. So Mm -hmm. why would I not expect James Robinson to be really great? And also he was involved in the passing game and Chris Thompson is not. So James Robinson is like a surefire RB one for me to go in the rest of the season. It's amazing. Like the, the people that ended up with James Robinson on their teams, everybody's pretty much had to deal with injury, but James Robinson has been a late round saving grace, like kind of league winner. Um, yep. potential if he can keep this up all season. Huge. Um, yep. And the, the Jacksonville offense looks so different without DJ Chark being there. It's very clear that Keelan Cole. Though? Yeah. I mean, DJ Chark, Chark wasn't is, doing a lot even when he was there, right? Correct. But he was always taking away the number one defensive back. And when that deep, when the number one D back can go and stop a Keelan Cole or a LaVisca Chenault type guy, then their offense just doesn't look the same. You saw how effective Gardner Minshew was prior to that game and what he looked like in this week's game. So you got to, I think DJ Chark is still the, still the guy there um, that you want to own of those three wide receivers. We were a little worried last week, but I think last week, um, last week's game actually proved who you want to own in that offense. Yeah. If DJ Chark can ever actually pull it together, um, yep. he just needs them, that target chair. Bengals. My question is, T. Higgins a thing? No. Nine targets, three catches, 40 yards, two touchdowns. Nine targets? I got... Let me me try to convince you here, Alex. Okay. Let's talk T. Higgins' snap percentage over the first three weeks. In week one, T. Higgins only played 22% of snaps. Week two, he played 65% of snaps. Week three, he played 79% of snaps. So okay. we're seeing we're seeing this. Actually, hold on. Let's get it right for the people at home. We're seeing this. We're on upward trend here, right? <clears throat> Did you know that Joe Burrow has the most dropbacks in the league? Yes. Oh, you did. You're so smart. Well, yeah, no, because I, I said... Uh... On our pod earlier this week that he's currently on pace for the most passes in NFL history. See, you knew that, right? I just I did. We're two peas in a pod. We're two fish in a bucket. We're two good looking dudes on a webcam a, uh, late on at a night screen. Uh, during yep. the week. We're just it's wonderful, isn't it? Ah. Joe Burrow should be picked up in every league if he's not already. He should be started in every league. He's that currently far? Only- Joe Burrow, yeah, he's only rostered in 60% of the leagues. Um, currently quarterback 10. If they're going to keep throwing the ball as much as they are, and Joe Mixon is currently RB38, and they're throwing when they get to the goal line, um, yeah, of course I would. I would Joe Mixon is RB38 because he's not getting used. Like, how do you pay that man that money and then not use Joe Mixon? RIP everybody that drafted Joe Mixon in the second round. Like, Good looking out. His his carries are there. He's got 19 carries, 16 carries, 17 carries. He's just not doing much with them. But the thing is, like in the second round, you can still draft running backs that are going to have a built in uh, passing game work that provide that floor that you want in a running back, let alone you're drafting him as your RB1 still in the second round if you picked up 
Devante or DeAndre in the first, you know, whoever in the first round, and you're going to pick know. Joe Mixon. I mean, it's just there were so many but, better people available where he was going. I get that, but Joe Mixon was also an RB one last year. I believe he finished year ranked twelfth, and so you were hoping that hey, rookie quarterback, Kamara finishes is, twelve, but he okay, he was he running was somewhere back, running that. He was running, running back area. thirteen from week four on, but. There's no reason why he shouldn't be better in a better offense with a better quarterback. And he's all considerably worse. Yeah. It just, I don't know. I, it's baffling. Um, but Tyler that, Boyd, let, let Tyler Boyd continue to, to fire up on the outside and keep AJ Green's targets at bay. And uh, Tyler Boyd is a for sure wide receiver too, at worst the rest of the way. Do you think that T Higgins has a chance of, supplanting AJ Green as the second wide receiver in that offense? Um, it depends on how bad they are and if how much they're looking forward to the future. I, AJ Green has just looked washed to me. He has, and I have one reason, and there is absolutely no argument to it why I think that T. Higgins will eventually take over this season. And it is because he is wearing number 85, Ocho Cinco flashbacks. He looks great. They got to put him in more. The guy absolutely blew up last week and he's fantastic. So I think the workload continues to increase. I hope it does. Yeah. AJ Green says he's still getting comfortable after not playing last year because of an ankle injury. Well, too damn bad. It's week three. Figure it out. <laughs> Figure it out. <laughs> Alex's heart grew two sizes that day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, here comes the mess. So. We have two teams, but we're really going to talk about four teams. Um, uh, so the next game up is Vikings at the Texans. And then the game after that is Steelers at the Titans. Um, hopefully these games get played. I guess we'll start there. Obviously, Vikings Texans looks more promising right now, given that nobody's tested positive on those two teams for COVID. That is. Um, they, they might have tested positive for something else, but yeah, they don't disclose there's, that. There's antibiotics for those. Okay. <laughs> or creams. <laughs> <laughs> oh what are we doing? God. We're idiots. I know. This is where our heads both went to the same place. That was great. Yeah. Um, I just, right, so just, j- just a recap. Somebody from... Titans. From... Sorry, who? Somebody from the Titans, the That's right. Somebody linebacker. Somebody from the coach. Titans tested positive after they played the Vikings this week. Not true. They to- tested positive before the game. They did not travel with the team. Linebacker coach tested positive, did not travel. Okay, with the team to play uh, the Vikings. The Titans did not notify the Vikings of the positive test going into the game. So after the game, you have all of these players hanging out in the middle of the field, you know, that probably wouldn't have happened if the Vikings knew that there was positivity (laughs) going on uh, in the Titans. And so the power of positivity, the power of positive positivity is not great right now. You want you want negativity. Um, Okay. Oh, man, it's just such a mess of a situation. And what makes it worse for fantasy players and really fans, I mean, outside of the fantasy aspect of it is like the NFL hasn't, they've said that the game is postponed, but they, the, the Steelers Titans game is postponed. They have not postponed the Vikings Texans game yet. They're going to test them all week and monitor. If people start popping positive towards the end of the week, I'm sure that'll be postponed as well. Um, it's just the, there's so much cloudy murkiness to this because they said that Steelers Titans is postponed to Monday, but it could be Tuesday. If they played Wednesday, it's akin to a team playing on Sunday and having to play again on Thursday night. So maybe Wednesday is not, you know, out of the realm of possibilities. Or maybe they flip some bye weeks around, reschedule the game. This week's a bye week for the Steelers and the Titans. Um, gonna be a mess no matter what they do and a mess for fantasy players hopefully you guys added extra bench spots 
and IR spots, the platforms aren't making it any easier on anybody because they're just nope. have the game is postponed. So you can't drop them. You can't put them in an IR slot. You just have to hold them and they take up bench space. And so yeah, and and you can't modify the roster settings once the season starts, which, which is the just worst part you. about all of it. So, you know, basically, and I was super proud of our COVID podcast of like what to do with with your leagues. And what we didn't even think about was, hey, just add like five bench spots and just say, hey, nobody can use those five open bench spots there in case of COVID. And then you don't have to worry about dropping anybody. I, I think we were both planning on people being listed as out or you could somehow, you know, move, still move them to an IR slot if a game was postponed and they are not making that possible so no. the the best solution would have been to just add bench spots and now you're kind of stuck with what you started with and it sucks. Yeah, it really does. I honestly the onus is on ESPN and the platforms to try and fix it in some way and make it more flexible. Yeah, um, and what what we're doing in our league cuz you have James Conner and, and Roethlisberger on your team and and we talked about it. It's just like what do you you're like what do you want me to do? And I'm like I'm like I don't I don't know what you should do because if they play, you're still going to want to start Roethlisberger and you're going to want to start James Conner. James Conner is a top 15 back if he's playing. Right. And so what's the solution for this? And we kind of Jimmy rig something where it's just like, all right, keep them playing. If the game ends up getting canceled, post on your league board before the game starts to say, hey, if if James Conner's game gets canceled, I want to start David Johnson instead. You need to post it before before I, the game start on Sunday. Yes, before the game start on Sunday, not before the Steelers Titans game. Like you have to post you, really it should almost be on Thursday because if you want to play a Thursday yeah. player instead, then it should be a Thursday. So yeah, so you can leave the Steelers or whomever in your starting slot and then just say, "Hey, if the game ends up not being played, I want this player on my bench to start for me instead and your commissioner can go in and put those players in and adjust everything manually and yeah. take care of it that way there's just the issue then becomes you can't drop those players and you can't do anything so then those players just take up a bench slot and you're just kind of sol on that yeah so. uh, that's kind of the world of covid right i mean if you didn't give yourself the bench spot flexibility of them not like it just sucks. Hopefully that hopefully ESPN and or Yahoo figure out it's because those are the most played platforms. They somehow figure out how to say, hey, we uh, put a patch in overnight and gave every every team three uh, COVID spots for postponed games like that would be great. They're not going to do that. But here's hoping. Absolutely. Uh, let's actually get into these games. I feel like we've kind of talked through. I mean, we could talk about COVID and what could happen you, indefinitely, really. I mean, players could continue yep. to test positive over the week. And if I think if we see that, the games will just be canceled for the yep. weekend. But we'll see. Um, or rescheduled, I'll say. I don't think they're going to cancel anything. They're just going to have to get creative yeah, with they can scheduling. Yeah, move some bye weeks. Yeah, move some bye weeks around. Which is why I we talked to at they the beginning. They should have just done it. Well, they should have added more buys to give them flexibility yeah. in the season. And if you don't do that, then you don't give yourself any flexibility, but Hey man, no, nobody can touch the NFL. Why would you expect a worldwide pandemic to impact it? We didn't even know that the bears game was going to happen until Sunday morning to a certain extent because the cornerback for the Falcons went out. Right. Yeah. We'll see if more people top positive on that team. Oh man. Fingers crossed. We just get through this. Um, moving on to, Let's let's talk through the players, I guess. Now let's talk through these yeah. Vikings and Texans for the Vikings. Justin Jefferson, after last week, his week three blow up is up to wide receiver 20. Uh, he had nine targets, seven catches for 175 and a score against Tennessee. I really think that you're going to see that snap percentage continue to climb. The guy is a beast. I know Alex doesn't agree with me at all, but I don't care. Alex has been wrong about Leonard Fournette. <laughs> pretty, pretty Alex much everything. has been wrong about Larry Fitzgerald. Alex I was has right, been wrong uh, no, no, about I was right Alan about Lazard. the Jacksonville. Alex no, was on. wrong when he started Gardner Minshew in his league last week. Alex has just been and wrong. Wentz so, and Daniel Jones. But here's the thing. I was correct about the Jaguars running back position. It just didn't matter who it was. 
So just for clarification there, Justin <laughs> Jefferson flash in the pan one week, one week wonder. Um, next, he he's going to be dropped in every league in like two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> he, he is. Alex, this people are going to turn us off if you keep saying stupid shit. <laughs> this happens every year. This happens every year. Oh like my people God, went out. He's going to be people, dropped league wide. People went out and spent all this oh. money on John Ross the third after week one last year after he had two touchdowns. And three <laughs> weeks later, he was be- he wasn't even rostered. In pretty much every league, because everybody went out and oh, flash in the pan. This is the guy for the rest of the year. Went out, spent a ton of money. Does and Stephon then he was, he Diggs' did previous like four years with the Vikings mean anything to you? With the fact that they can support two receivers, like it no. just doesn't matter. No. This is why we're the Sackos, baby. It's why you've been wrong about everything else. You're just going to add. Fine. What do you want to let's No, This is a board bet. We are stopping. This is a board bet. What, where do you think John or Justin Jefferson finishes in receivers overall end of season? You, no. How about you tell me? Uh, 40 or better. He's currently 20. Okay. I'm not going to go wide receiver two. I'll give you 35. What, 30? 35? I'll take 30. 35? I'll take 30. No, do 36 because then that's flex. That's flex or better. 12, so 24, you're trying to buy four spot. I'm not doing it. All I'm saying is he's going to be bad. Fine. I'll do top 30 then. Put it on okay. the board. All right. Justin Jefferson, don't let me down. <laughs> you handsome, devilish man. Hmm. Uh, anything else out of the Vikings other than Adam nope. Thielen Cole absolutely getting destroyed by Justin Jefferson last week. I can't wait to watch it all season long. Nope. Waiting for uh, Delvin Cook to get hurt. So Alexander Madison takes over the offense. You've been saying that for four weeks uh, yep. with the Texans. Uh, Will Fuller currently wide receiver 35 Brandon Cooks all the way down at wide receiver 70 rough, super rough. Um, yeah, mm. hard, kind of hard to start either, but you kind of got to start fuller. Just not super exciting, though. Um, between the two. I don't know what do you have a huge preference between the two of them? I mean, nope, you you're going to take a wild ass guess every single week. I will say that Houston has had a tremendously difficult start to their schedule. So I would expect them to start getting better. Um, playing three of the best teams in the NFL to start your season is, yeah, is Kansas never... City, Baltimore, and Pittsburgh to start is awful. That's rough. So, Things are going to lighten up, though, against many, though. I tell you what, I yeah, wouldn't I would, be surprised I would, if Fuller... Yeah, I would expect, I would expect them to, to get the passing game going and get both of these guys um, going a little bit. Hopefully Randall Cobb stays off the field, but... Yeah. yeah, hopefully, hopefully they both can score a touchdown this week. Um, and as always, you always have the explosiveness of Fuller. He can go crazy one week. There's probably a 40 point week coming at some point. If you can guess the week, then bravo. I would expect Brandon Cooks to be more consistent going forward. But again, I've been wrong in everything. Yeah. Um, who do you without looking? Because I bet you probably have it up. Who do you nope. think is currently leading out of the receivers in uh, receiving yardage? Of the, like for the Texans? For the Texans. It's probably Randall Cobb. It is Randall Cobb. 177. Yeah. Fuller has 166. Yeah, Cooks has 138. Yeah, he's been he's been the most consistent guy they've had. He, like Especially once Cooks went out week one. He got all those targets at the end of the game and has kind of kept that consistency going. Um, Randall freaking Cobb, man. It's crazy. Yeah, Cobb has more receptions than Cooks and one less than Fuller. Hmm. But uh, my interesting stat of the week. Also, I got all of them. Fun factoids here. David Johnson played 96% of snaps in week three. Wow, that's a lot. He's an RB1. He played against three defenses. 
that were god awful um to play against yes to play against like you just horrible matchups and he has rb1 workload i'm honestly trying to buy him low in a ton of leagues just because of that workload like if you're gonna play 96 percent of snaps are you kidding me um yeah I thought Duke Johnson was going to be more of a factor here, and he is not. Another thing that Alex was wrong about. Now, let's move into these this Steelers at the Titans. Assuming it plays this week, unless, you know, we magically preview a week seven game right now. But uh, assuming they, they actually play right now, I think they've scheduled it for Monday night, tentatively pending further test results. Um, Assuming the Steelers and Titans play, what are you looking for? Um, I can't believe the disrespect that you have this week for Ryan Tannethrill. It is unbelievable. I haven't ranked one spot ahead of you this week. The disrespect that you consistently show this man every week is crazy, and I just don't understand it, and you never pronounce his name right. I don't get it. <laughs> I hate you. I hate you so much. <laughs> Did you rank him one spot ahead of me just to be a jerk? Uh, that wasn't the sole reason, but once I saw it, I was like, oh, hell yeah, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have Tannehill at 22. You have him at 21. I had him at a top 15 play last week. I just dropped him. Uh, because <laughs> Pittsburgh is going to be rough to them. Oh man, that makes me so happy. No, but, I don't. I don't have a whole lot to add here. Uh, apparently, they're going to give 400 carries to Henry this year, and that's what I want to talk about. His 16 game it. pace through three weeks is 437 carries, which outpaces Larry Johnson's all time uh, touch lead, all time rushing attempt lead with 416. He's going to run the ball more than 20 times more than Larry Johnson did in 2006. I don't get it. Um, they I love just it. Gave, I mean, yeah, I mean, they just gave him a big four year deal and they're going to burn him out in year one and he's going to be useless in year two and they'll probably cut him in year three because that's what happens to running. Got to establish a run, man. Got to establish Apparently. a run. Other than that, um, it'll be interesting to see uh, if Deontay plays this week. Maybe, you know, check out Chase Claypool if he's out there on waiver wires. Yep. He's obviously a huge dynasty uh, target. Um, the guy is a stud, but I would say yeah, you're, Juju you're, you're, is going to go ahead. Yeah. Your studs in this offense are going to continue to be your studs. Ben Roethlisberger is a good quarterback when he's healthy. James Conner is still a top 10 running back when he's healthy. And Juju Smith-Schuster is still a top 10 wide receiver when he's healthy. Or yep. what I should say when Ben is healthy, too. To a certain extent. Um, so fire up your studs and let them fly, especially after Tennessee just got destroyed by Minnesota last week. Absolutely. Uh, couldn't agree with you more. Fire up the studs in that game. Um, man, do those Titans miss AJ Brown, though? And it's going to be multiple more weeks without him. I just, oh, but some would I, say you have to discount Ryan Tana thrill, but you did it a little bit too much. <laughs> I would also fade Janu against the Steelers this week. That that's not great. I, I agree. Um, moving on to our next game, we have Seahawks at the Dolphins. This is going to be an absolute bloodbath, and I can't wait. I, there's no way that the Dolphins keep up with the Seahawks. I I mean I think I think Fitzpatrick could be streamable uh, this week, but I don't know if I. So, and I'm going to get crap for this, but you I just think, talked about how the Seahawks have the worst passing defense in the league. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you on, on Fitzpatrick. I think oh. he's more than playable this week. Okay. I, Wonderful. I, I, I do think that Miami secondary looked substantially better against Jacksonville last week. I know DJ Chark wasn't there, but Miami should be a run the ball and play defense team based on how much money they spent on their secondary this year. And I know that they're not going to be able to slow down DJ, um, DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett looked unbelievable last week, but I'm just saying that their defense looked a lot better last week than it did the first two weeks. Now, with that being said, 
I do think Fitzpatrick is probably going to be a top 10 quarterback this week because the Seahawks defense sucks and they're just letting Russ throw all over the field. By the way, I'm not going to say let Russ cook anymore because everybody says it. So I'm not going to say it. I apologize. I just don't like I think this is going to be a very, very high scoring game, probably. The Miami Dolphins defense is giving up the fourth most fantasy points so far this year. So I would. No, I know that, but they they ran into. No, to a certain extent, but they ran into Cam and they didn't know what that offense was going to look like the first week. And then they got bludgeoned by Josh Allen, who's doing that to literally everybody. Gardner Minshew was coming in hot and got he looked completely like he had no idea what he was doing uh, against the Miami defense. And I'm not Russ is currently playing like the best quarterback in football, but I'm just saying that Miami's defense, I, that are, there's a core there that's better than people think it is. That doesn't mean they're going to be able to stop Russ. Yeah. Um, I would absolutely fire up Chris Carson for the Seahawks if, uh, or I'm sorry, excuse me, Carlos Hyde he and did, Chris Carson can't he did play. Practice. Chris Carson did pl- practice today. Um, we're recording this on a Wednesday, so they are hopeful that he plays. And if that happens, um, it's tough on who to start because you don't. If he's healthy, you have to assume that he's going to get all the all the carries, and you can't start Hyde. Yeah, that's but just yeah. Just be aware of it. Uh, if he does end up sitting, then I would obviously fire up Hyde in a plus matchup against the Dolphins. Uh, you got to start Lockett DK here. There's really not a whole lot to say. They're both lighting the world on fire. Other than both when top DK five wide receivers. Yeah. Yeah. It's Ex- crazy. I mean, if unless DK's out here dropping more touchdowns or getting him punched out at the one. Um, yeah. For the Dolphins, I think the only people that you're starting in that offense are Fitzmagic. If you're dealing with quarterback issues or injuries or COVID shenanigans or as a streamer, otherwise Gaskin as like a, a flex play. If he's getting 22 rushing attempts, I don't think they're going to run the ball 22 times in this game, though, trying to keep up with the Seahawks. Um, you have to start Devonte Parker. They're, they're the Seattle's defense yeah. is the worst two wide receivers, so you have to start their number one wide receiver. And I mean, they're statistically the fourth best against tight ends. Um, but I mean, even Mike Kosicki, he's currently the fifth ranked tight end. You're probably not benching him this week. No, it's just you could maybe talk me into considering Preston Williams or Isaiah Ford if you're in deeper leagues, but those would be tough starts for me. Um, yep. And the never ending will Jordan Howard score a touchdown with less than 10 yards rushing. We'll <laughs> probably continue this week. Moving on. Browns at the Cowboys. Uh, what are you looking nice. for out of the Browns? I think Odell explodes this week. Really? Um, I do. I, I don't know why. It just feels like it's one of those games where he's just going to go off. Well, if I'll give you a you know, a couple of reasons why. First off, the Dallas Cowboys are giving up the third most points right now. Um, <laughs> average fantasy points against. They're averaging 26. Uh, they've given oh, up it. nine passing touchdowns. Um, tied yep. for the lead. Should, cu- <laughs> cumulatively, they're the 31st ranked offense allowing fantasy points to uh, wide receivers. Uh, at least in half PPR, they're giving up 41 points a week to wide receivers. So I think Ooh. Odell goes off. I think Jarvis Landry um, is definitely a flex play this week. Um, I just would, I would, I just think they're going to explode. I think this is a high scoring game. I don't think Dallas's defense is good. And again, there's no fans. I, I read something earlier this week about they've seriously curtailed holding penalties that they've that they've been calling. So more, there's just more points. We talked about the average being 51 uh, points per week, or sorry, points per game. Uh, for the record, I would not bet anything against Vegas this week because Vegas always makes a correction and they they're gonna nail you at some point. So I'm staying away from literally everything this week because this is where Vegas figures it out and you lose. So hmm. just side note on gambling there. Um, but yeah, I, you're going to fire up Chubb. You're going to fire up Kareem Hunt, still both RB ones. And yeah, I think Baker's more than playable and Odell and Jarvis go off too. So I, I actually really like the Browns offense this week. Um, 
Oh, there was this interesting stat, too, for the Cowboys. There are two teams that have not had a single long run out of their offense. One being the New York Jets, for obvious reasons. And the second one being the Cowboys have not had a run longer than 15 yards. Yep. But, yeah. Man, just waiting for that Zeke explosion. Can we talk about how many drop balls he had, too, last week? Like, Yeah, he looked completely out of it. I don't know what they, it was. They, they was like, it was like there was like three plays in a row where it seemed like he just they threw it to me, just dropped it. I don't know if he got hit too hard or what was going on, but yeah, he looked he looked way out of it. And then can we also please, please talk about the uh, Michael Gallup glow up that he had catching six of nine targets for 138 yards and a score like Everybody was wondering when Gallup was finally going to get it together. Gallup finally got it together last week. So it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, that that happens at the same time that Cedric Wilson has five catches for 107 and two touchdowns on seven targets. If they have four legit wide receivers, that hurts the value of Amari Cooper going forward. Um, And Dak Prescott's the one you want to own. Yeah, 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 that's a good way to spin it there. Um. Right. Just right. He, they're going to spread it out. It's very Mike McCarthy offense where, you know, when they did have all those weapons and yeah, Jordy Nelson was the headliner, but then you also had Randall Cobb working underneath and you had, um, I th- what was Greg Jennings still there? I, but either way, they, Mike McCarthy offense is always spread it around. The top guy is usually the top guy. Um, but in this offense, you don't even know who it is because they're all so similarly talented. Yep. CD Lamb is able to be consistent, though. Another game right at 10 points. That's kind of three weeks in a row. You know, you get nine points, 15, and then 10. So, man, he looks smart for anybody that drafted him. Currently, wide receiver 26 and half PPR. Um, crazy. Yep. Uh, anything else you're looking for out of either the Browns or the boys? Nothing. No, I mean, I would fire up Chubb, and obviously Hunt is a great flex. So, yeah. Yeah, it's just a question of whether or not. studs. Yeah, exactly. Um, let's move on. Let's do Cardinals at the Panthers. Let's talk about these Cardinals. Do you think Drake finally gets it going against the Panthers this no. week? No, I don't think so. I, again, I've been down on Kenyon Drake the entire time, and it turns out that it just seems like Kyler Murray's just take he affects. That running, but like he was, Kenny Drake was great last year, but the addition of Hopkins and how much Kyler Murray's running, it just seems like it's reducing opportunities for Kenyon Drake. I, if you draft it, you you draft him in a round two, it's really hard to get away from him because you probably don't have somebody with higher upside than him, uh, but you're probably getting real nervous. It's just hard. I mean, he's still touching the ball 20 times a game on average. So it's hard to be down on him. It's just that the yards, the rushing yards aren't there. 60 yards, 60 yards, excuse me, against San Fran in week one, 86 against Washington last week, 73 against Detroit, or excuse me, 86 against Washington week two, 73 against Detroit last week. He hasn't had a whole lot of catches. And I feel like the reason he hasn't had a whole lot of catches, it's because those are kind of like when plays break down and things. And we talked about it with the switch from Tyrod to Herbert. If it's that mobile quarterback, he's not going to check it down to the running back. He's going to go pick up five, 10 yards on his own. And so you're not seeing those Mm -hmm. check downs for Drake. So you're just losing out on that and you're losing out on an extra five points a week. Um because of it and he hasn't had the rushing touchdowns to prop up his score and he hasn't gone over 100 yards rushing so he's really just like a low end RB2 or like a middle of the pack RB2 uh obviously I, I do th- I do think it has to it has to get a little bit better though right because San Francisco week 1 with a healthy Bosa like their defense is really good that's Washington not a surprise has a great 60 line. yards yep and Detroit is meh like I, I was a little surprised they only had 18 for 73, but it was, you know, I, I do think there's better days ahead at Carolina, at the Jets, at Dallas, home against Seattle. Um, I, I would not be if he's going to get it going. He's got to start doing it now, especially the next two weeks. If he doesn't. Oh, 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the Carolina Panthers defense are giving up more than 40 points a week to the running back position. So if he doesn't do it this week, it is alert mode for sure. Um, So what about the rest of it? I mean, what about the receivers? Do you think there's a second receiver that kind of steps up for the Cardinals? Are you excited about Andy Isabella's production last week at all? I mean, he was able to uh, produce four catches for 50 yards, had two scores, only four targets. The guy's a production machine. If he can get the targets, they just, he needs more opportunity, I think, but it's just hard with Kirk there. Yeah, I don't, I, I had a look. I mean, Christian Kirk is the 115th ranked wide receiver so far. Like See he's ya. done nothing. Fitzgerald has done, Fitzgerald hasn't done much. I don't, I don't know. It's almost very similar to the Texans offense, right? Where it was just kind of Hopkins and you'd have like an occasional guy go off. Um, it kind of seems like the same thing's happening here where they just keep throwing it to Hopkins. And I, I don't know if anybody else is usable. But yeah, especially right now, they're not. I would just hope that maybe Isabella is able to get some more playing time, hopefully, you know, given his production. But we'll see. And then out of the Panthers, Mike Davis checks in at fourth in targets at the running back position. In, in, in one, crazy. one week and a quarter, and he is fourth in targets at the running back position. Uh, with 17 targets. Just absolutely bananas. Yeah, he's my he's my 10th ranked flex player this week uh, for all players because of those targets. I would expect them to be behind and Teddy's very comfortable checking down to him, obviously. So if he's going to, especially in a PPR league, he is an RB1 for sure. Yeah. Until then- Christian McCaffrey comes back. Yeah, and then other than that, I mean, you got to fire up for the Panthers. I mean, you got to fire up uh, Robbie at Flex and and DJ Moore, right? Like, not a whole lot there to just you just you just want yeah I'm, more out of DJ Moore, right? I think everybody was expecting more out of DJ Moore. I mean, ranked 29th receiver this year so far. I. A little just disappointed. I did not think Robbie Anderson was going to... I think you did not either. We did not think that this was going to happen. Uh, We thought DJ Moore was going to be that wide receiver one. And it turns out that it's Robbie freaking Anderson who's currently the wide receiver one. Absolutely nuts. I don't... Yeah. It'll be interesting to see where they end up actually. I'm... I'm, It's only been three weeks. I'm really looking to see where everybody is at like the halfway point. I want to know what everybody's doing after eight weeks. Um, We'll see. Um, I'm good to move on. Let's go to the Colts at the Bears. Obviously, got to fire up Jordan Taylor. It's his backfield. I think Naheem Hines gets some work. T.Y. Hilton looks terrible, but there's been injury after injury from Paris Campbell. Now Micah Pittman is injured and evidently underwent surgery. Um, So, I mean, you could add Zach Pascal if you're feeling frisky, but I'm just yeah, it's hard to start anybody other than like I would Mo not, Alley Cox and Jordan I would Taylor. not start T. Y. Hilton. Yeah, do not start T. Y. Hilton this year or this week against the Bears, who are one of the best secondaries in football. I know Matt Ryan lit him up a little bit to start the game last week, but um, do not start T. Y. Hilton. I think this is the the week that Naheem Hines goes off again. Uh, he's due. Uh, I think there's going to be a ton of checkdowns. The Bears like dropping back. Um, trying to only bring four and get pressure with their front four. They sit in zones and then Philip Rivers, the king of checkdowns, is going to be checking down most of the game. Um, as as we kind of get into the Bears a little bit, I do think that Nick Foles is a serious upgrade for all of those target uh, people that are going to be getting targets. I think Anthony Miller becomes playable. I think Allen Robinson is going to be back to his top top 12 guy. I think Jimmy Graham is a very solid tight end too. Um, tight end too again, means uh, seven, seven, through, seven 12. through twelve for for me. Um, and yeah, I I think Big Nick man. I think he changes that entire offense. And um, I would not. The Bears are under or were underdogs at least to start the week. I think the Bears come out and blow out uh, Indianapolis and and they sit on Philip Rivers and they get behind and Phil just checks down. 
when I think when the Chargers came to Soldier Field last year, uh, it was the Austin Ackler show uh, from a cast catch passing standpoint and i would not be surprised to say see the same thing with pass catching hunts. not catch passing but yeah yes. whatever you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah i'm completely on board with you here as far as you know what you're doing or what you're looking for out of the bears uh nick Foles obviously i think brings this offense a step forward um just i just feel because it, they're gonna run a sophisticated offense instead of the same like 10 just, concepts for for mitchie like m- Mitch could create and do plays that Nick Foles cannot create and execute from a mobility standpoint. However, he just misses on too many of like the throws that you need to make and Nick Foles doesn't. And that's why Nick Foles is going to be starting. Um, Ravens at Washington. What are you looking for out of the Ravens? Besides offense. Yeah, they looked terrible the other night. Uh, I want to see Hollywood Brown continue to create separation. And most importantly, I want to see Lamar Jackson try to throw him the ball accurately. And in he a spot missed where him only on he two can catch wide it. open bombs, two wide open surefire touchdowns. Like, you unbelievable. Have to, you have to keep starting Marquise Brown. He's getting wide open. Lamar just has to hit the guy. Um, I don't know if you can start him. I think you have to wait till he can show that he can hit him because. It hasn't worked. I think he's a decent flex play, um, which is, I I mean, maybe, I don't know where, you know, where a lot of people drafted him at. I think he, he went maybe around five, round six, but that's kind of flex play territory. Um, anyways, let's talk about this backfield. It's a mess. You had Dobbins lead the way with 22 snaps. Ingram had 15. Gus Edwards had 12. Uh, as far as snaps go, Dobbins you know, obviously led the way. And then if you want to talk about carries, Dobbins only had one carry. He had four targets. Ingram had Crazy. seven carries, one target. Gus Edwards, four carries, no targets. No real surprise there. Um, but man, it was nice to see Dobbins in that two minute, you know, sprint, hurry up offense. Uh, just really need to cut Mark Ingram out of this backfield because he's looking like the third best back there. Um, Gus Gus Edwards might have looked like the best back in the Chiefs game, but yeah. And uh, for those of you that took Lamar Jackson in the first or second round after his historic year last year, he's currently uh, quarterback twelve. So sorry. Ouch. We did our our second our second podcast was do not draft Lamar Jackson. We told you to draft him. But if you didn't listen to us and only read the headline of our podcast, you did really good. Bazinga. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, just you, honestly, I think I think the Ravens are pissed at their performance. And I think that they dropped like 50 on Washington. I think it's going to be a bloodbath. I think Washington's defense is better than you think it is, although Chase Young's hurt. Right. So, um, yeah, they might. We'll see. Uh, and then for Washington, I mean, you're, scar- you're starting Scary Terry and Logan Thomas <laughs> if you're desperate at uh, tight end. But other than that, you're going to fire up Antonio Gibson and hope that he continues his Maybe. ascent. I don't know like, if you do start Antonio Gibson. Uh, I mean, the Ravens defense is pretty ruthless to the running backs. So I, I think you might have better options than Antonio Gibson this week. Yeah, I actually, I'll give you that because where you drafted Antonio Gibson to get him and he's only running back 32 right now, like you're yeah. going to have plenty of other flex plays on your bench. They're going to be more appealing than Antonio Gibson. So, yeah, I would actually fade yep. Antonio in most sit start questions. I would probably pick somebody else over Antonio. Mm-hmm. Good, good call, Alex. Um, anything else? Don't, don't worry, he'll, he'll score like three touchdowns this week. And so. you'll be something else Alex is wrong about. There it is. That's right. Yep. <laughs> Let's get into the Giants at the Rams. For the Giants, is Daniel Jones good at quarterback? We don't know. He's got a really terrible offensive line, so that's not going to help him. His, I mean, his repertoire of people that he's throwing to have never stayed healthy. And Daniel Jones currently quarterback twenty nine. Ouch! You know what? Yeah, I'm. Um, I I'm going to drop. I'm going to live during this podcast. I'm just going to drop him. I'm I'm literally <laughs> doing it right now. I 
I'm looking <laughs> looking at our league page for, for statistics, and I, I literally just dropped him because he's on my team and he's quarterback 29. I just dropped him. Uh, oh, that's awesome. Oh, man. It's just this offense is in a complete disarray with the state of its offensive line. And then the running back position is just absolutely freaking atrocious. Um, I, I, oh, free, I, th- I, think free, I think Freeman clearly has the highest upside in the backfield. I would expect him to continue to have more carries going forward. Um, I, I mean, I think I have him ranked as like RB 29 or something like that. Devonta um, Freeman had five rushes for 10 yards. Yeah, it was his first week. So what I would say is this. If you have him on your team, one, I'm sorry that you spent all the fab on any of these guys. I would absolutely 1 million percent punt on starting any of the Giants running backs. I would just I wouldn't do it until one of them can prove that they can do something. I would punt on all of them uh, to start there for the receivers. uh, You got Slayton going against the Rams. Um It's just, he does all of his damage going deep. He dropped a 25 burger in the first week and then back to back five point week. So you're not, you're not thrilled if you're starting Slayton either. So it's just like, I would almost, I would almost punt on all giants players. That's where I'm at right now. Yeah, no, I don't blame you. Okay. Well, thanks for being argumentative. What about the Rams? Uh, There's nothing to argue about. They suck. No. Uh, what about the Rams? Daryl Henderson is amazing and he's going to continue to be amazing. <laughs> no, we have no idea what that backfield is <laughs> going to look like on a weekly basis. Literally uh, no idea. I, I do see. And this, so I get, you give me crap for my Justin Jefferson thing, but it's same thing goes for acres. Everybody week one. Oh, we got to go pick him up. And then two weeks later, you're looking at your roster. And you're like, I spent how much on that guy? I don't even yeah. know what he's going to do this week. Henderson, and that's Brown what and happens. Akers, they need to be rostered, but like you hate it because this backfield is akin to the Ravens backfield, except one of them has always been injured. So one of those three guys is absolutely exploding while they, the rest of them deal with injury. Like if these injuries happened to the Ravens and it was Ingram missing time, then you would see the JK Dobbins explosion. It's sorry. I said, I said acres acres is already on a race team. I clearly meant Malcolm Brown, but you get the point where he's, you can't start him. You can't start any of these guys. If they're health, if there are simultaneously at least two of them healthy. Yeah. Well, maybe, but except for when they're playing the giants defense, who's given up like top 10 most points to the running back position right now, I would probably start Dale Henderson this weekend if I had him at flex, but I don't want anything to do with any of those running backs and you just got to hope that Jared Goff start and continues to light up Cooper Cup and Robert Woods and um, my guy, Tyler Higby. Living on a prayer. Uh, Moving on. Patriots at the Chiefs. Do you think that Cam Newton and the Patriots can slow down the Chiefs? Is it going to be another Chiefs on the Chiefs defense? They might. Uh, I... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the Chiefs defense might be really good and we just don't know it because all the focus is on their offense. Um, I would expect this to be clearly a high scoring game. I, I was giving you crap before we started it. You had Patrick Mahomes ranked as a, as a 10th ranked quarterback this week, um, discounting him against the Patriots defense, which slightly overrated. They got destroyed by, by the Seahawks a couple weeks ago. Um, it's not the same Patriots defense that it was a year ago. But that doesn't mean they're that they're not playable. Um, I drafted them in a league and I literally have not started them any week. And I believe they're like defense six or something like that. I suck again. I'm always wrong. I get it. Um, so, no, I do. Back to the Patriots offense. I think Julian Edelman was so beat up two weeks ago after that Seattle game that like he just was really trying to get through last week and he's probably going to feel a little bit better this week. Every time the Patriots and uh, Chiefs get together, it's always how can Bill Belichick try to slow them down? And the way that they're going to try to slow them down is by running Cam Newton and keeping the ball on the ground with whoever, um, you know, Sonny James Michelle White is back this week. great last week for the record. Yeah. I mean, 
Yeah, I mean, he he's looking a lot better. James White's back, so you're not going to get that Rex Burkhead game ever again. So don't even go Come pick on, him up. Rex it's not Burkhead, RB1. Stop. So all the Patriots are going to do is run the ball and try to keep Mahomes off the field. Um, so I would not be surprised to see this be at least a, a smaller, a little lower of a, of a point total than you think it might be, just because the Patriots are literally going to try to run 40 seconds off the clock every play and hope that they can keep converting first downs against what people perceive to be the Kansas City's, um, their defense's weakest part, which is their run defense. Yeah, I think the Patriots are, uh, they're going to have, they're going to have to score. Both teams are going to have to score. It's going to be a high scoring game. Um, I think that the, they'll give the Chiefs a more of a run for their money than the Ravens did. Um, you absolutely have to fire yeah. up Cam if you got him, Julian Edelman if you got him. I'd be nervous to pick anybody out of that backfield to start. Um, I'm excited for Damian Harris to come off the the IR, see what he can contribute. But if anything, that might just muddy the waters more back there. Um, yep. If he even gets any playing time this week, that might give him a week or two to kind of practice, build up the reps, and then put him back in. But either way. Uh, but yeah, James White coming back is going to cloudy it anyway. I would... It's, it's the known starters, you know, it's Julian and Cam. Maybe Nikhil Harry has a game and, because Cam's trying to keep up, but you you don't want to start Nikhil. So. Yeah, it's it's the two guys. That's the only value and and maybe a James White. Um, but we don't really know what he's going to do. And, um, you know, week one, he only had six point seven points. So I uh, I would avoid everybody in the Patriots backfield. But with that being said, I think that's what they're going to try to do. So it's like that class. You don't know who it's going to be, so you can't start them. But I do think that there's going to be at least one running back that has a pretty good game. Mm -hmm. When it it comes to Kansas City. I was going to say the running back that's going to have a good game is going to be Clyde Edwards E. (laughs) Lair. As they said on Monday night over Clyde Edwards E. Lair. Oh, man. But uh, yeah, it's going to be Clyde. I think Clyde. You're firing up Clyde and you're firing up Tyreek and Travis Kelsey. And that's it. Like you can't fire up McCall. I understand he had a great game, but he's fourth on that team in targets. He's the fourth or fifth option on any given pass play. Like grats. If you lucked into the McCall Hardman points last week, um, you're not firing up Sammy or you're not firing up Robinson. So that's pretty straightforward. Yep. You know, everything there is about the Kansas city offense. And then moving on, Bills at Raiders. This game is going to be interesting. Josh Allen might blow up again with fantasy points. <laughs> what a start to this season. This start, this we look like idiots for saying stay away from the Bills, but it's because it's like their second half of the season is not great, but especially their playoff schedule. However, we did say they were going to blow up at the beginning. That came true. Devin Singletary looked great without Zach Moss there. Um, I just if Moss is healthy and they're both playing, then I don't want to play either one. Stefan Diggs is a man, top 10 receiver. Um, man, you got to fire up, you know, him and Josh Allen. And outside of that, if both running backs are playing, I'm not going to start either one. What about you? What do you think about the bills? I think Singletary is playable potentially uh, half PPR 7.8, 8.6, 14.1 1 over the three weeks. Um, he looked a lot better last week than than he has previously. Um, also, Las Vegas is currently giving up the most fantasy points to running backs. They're averaging giving up 40 points to running backs every week. Um, so Zach you, Moss I, did return to practice uh, today, so it's it'll be interesting to see what that split looks like. Yeah, I, I would hope that they realize that Devin Singletary is probably the more talented of the two backs. Um, so yeah, he's, he's probably the third guy that I'm playing um, in that offense and probably nobody else. And then out of the Raiders, there's not a receiver there. I want to start. Are you, are you firing up uh, Renfro this week? No, it's all about uh, your boy, Darren Walrus. Uh, after not doing anything last week, we talked about it, uh, what we were looking for, Last week, the Patriots were going to stop Darren Waller and the Patriots stopped Darren Waller because the Patriots wanted to stop Darren Waller. Uh, They're no longer paying the Patriots defense. And I think Darren Waller gets back to his uh, his normal ways against a relatively uh, weak secondary in Buffalo, which we thought was going to be a little bit better than it is. But yeah, I would expect Darren Waller to 
to be very good. You're obviously starting Josh Jacobs, um, yeah. but probably not really anybody else. No groundbreaking analysis here. Um, nope. Eagles at Niners, the Sunday night game. Man, it probably looked a lot better in the preseason yeah. than it does right now, right? Like, woo! I think the 49ers are probably going to house the Eagles, even with any any backup starting at any position, anybody on IR. Don't think it matters. Carson Wentz is in yikes mode right now. And there's Greg Ward <laughs> was a waiver wire pickup of the week. <laughs> like, oh man. Another guy that people will be dropping in a couple of weeks being like, why, why is this guy even on my team? Uh, Alshon Jeffrey is questionable uh, for this week. Uh, he was a limited participant uh, in practice. So if he plays, I, I still think you got to give, give him a week to get back into the swing of things. I don't think you're starting him. No, make him um, prove it. Against the 49ers. Um, Zach Ertz, man. Disappointing. No. Well, Zach Ertz. Could be tight end one rest of the season with Goddard out with that fractured ankle. Oh, that's true. With Goddard out with that fractured ankle. I am telling you, congratulations, all of you people that got Zach Ertz in the fourth and fifth round, because literally what happened last season, the entire same, you know, oh, array of injuries befell all the same players and they are all hurt all leading to Zach Ertz getting 10 plus targets a game. And I think that he's easily in a, a great candidate for a uh, top tight end rest of the season. Name, uh, name the tight ends that you would not trade for Zach Ertz. Travis, just Kelsey. one for just one for one. Travis Kelsey. End of list. Not Kittle. No, I would trade Kittle because he's hurt. Okay. What about Andrews? I would also trade Andrews and Waller and Higby. Yes. Okay. I just think that the targets are going to be there the whole season. All right. But we'll see. Um, Currently the 13th ranked tight end uh, in fantasy. Uh, Carson Wentz has been awful. That whole offense has been awful. They did nothing really against Cincinnati's terrible defense last week and uh i don't want to start any of these people except for zach Ertz. yeah well and miles sanders is also usable if you drafted him you have to use him correct yeah you're defaulted into it and then uh for the niners i tell you what man i think that uh i don't well it's I don't know if it's been formally announced or it's just been kind of announced on the side, but I really don't think Debo comes back this week. They've talked about, and they don't even have to take him off the IR until game day Sunday, so you're not going to know. But they've talked about giving him a week to sort of ramp up activities, and then the expectation is that he would play next week. So given that, let's just say that that is accepted and that's what happens. I would not be scared to fire up Brandon Ayuk. I agree. Like, I totally Brand- agree. Brandon Ayuk last week, eight targets turned into five for 70. He also had three carries for 31 yards and a score. Like the guy, they schemed up plays to put him in the backfield. He is doing, he is doing what Shanahan wants Debo to do, but Debo isn't there to do it. So then it is Ayuk instead. So. Yeah. And I, I think you have, you have to pay attention the the tough thing about this is you don't know if Raheem Mostert's going to play or not. He's questionable. I would not be surprised to see them give him another week to try to get him fully healthy before they bring him back. If he does play, obviously you cannot start Jeff Wilson. Um, if he doesn't play, I think you do start Jeff Wilson. Again, you don't know until the night game. If you have both, then that makes it easy. Um, if you have one or the other, um, it's t- it's going to be tough to to start either one of them because you won't know what that's going to look like Sunday night. Um, and I think Jarek McKinnon, you have to play regardless of who else is playing. Yeah, absolutely. It's just the Jeff. It's just the Jeff Wilson show. <laughs> Maybe uh, unless unless Mostert plays. Yeah, um, unless Mostert plays, it's the Jeff Wilson show, man. It's so. It's just you gotta tell. You can so telegraph some of these things. It's like everybody was running to pick up Jarek McKinnon. It's like, oh hey, well, why don't you guys also consider getting Jeff Wilson? Because you know Shanahan is going to give Jeff Wilson the ball if Mostert and Coleman aren't there. But 
All right. Yeah, I mean, M- McKinnon's been incredibly consistent so far. Um, when they gave him a big contract a couple of years ago, this is what they thought he was going to do. He's been chronically injured, but half PPR points, 12, 15, and 15. You're you're ecstatic if you took a late, late flyer or picked him up uh, off the waivers week one. Yeah, and then we do have the return of George Kittle this week. Obviously, got to fire him up and hope for good things. Hope for healthy yep. knees. And then lastly, our Monday night game, Falcons at the Packers. How bad are the Packers going to lay or or bring the Falcons to the woodshed on Monday night football? I don't think it's going to be pretty. The only way the Falcons have a chance of winning this game is if the Packers get up by 10 or more points, because if the Falcons get up 10 or more points, they're definitely not going to win. <laughs> Oh man, I feel so bad for all Falcons fans. I don't. They're oh. they're doing okay. I would I, uh, start it, all three receivers for the Falcons. I, Russell Gage, Ridley, and Julio. If Julio plays, um, other than that, I think a sneaky ad. We've seen this increased usage from Brian Hill week over week. I, true. I tried to sneakily add him in our league. Uh, I tried. I put in a zero bid. I got housed by somebody that put in some real money on him. I'm it's it's fine. It happens. Um, however, I think that he's a nice little bench dash for anybody that's looking for some running back help. Uh, he's looked so much better than Todd Gurley has. Other than that, you're firing up Matt Ryan and Hayden Hurst, maybe. Um, yeah. What do you what are you looking for out of the Falcons? Yeah, it's I mean, it, it's all about that running back split, right? Um, I think Gurley's still the guy there, but. I mean, Brian Hill has looked substantially better. So if he is available, that is somebody that maybe you go stash depending on what your roster construction looks like. Todd Gurley has been somewhat disappointing, but he did pretty well against the Bears. Uh, Currently, Green Bay is giving up the 30th most points to running backs. Obviously, a lot of that was Kamara last week, small sample size. Todd Gurley obviously cannot do what Alvin Kamara can do. Um, But Gurley looked more like himself against the Bears this last week than he had the first couple weeks of the season. So maybe he's starting to feel better or something with that chronic knee. Um, but again, the Falcons just don't run the ball enough where Gur- like Gurley's currently RB24. I don't know if he goes any higher than that. My thing, I guess my question for you is this. Say that Hill continues to look better and that the Falcons continue to look to give Hill more time. At best, what do you think that split looks like for Hill? Do you think he can pull up 50-50? 50-50. You think? Yeah, at, at most. In um, that offense, to me, that's not really a lot of value for either one of those guys, right? Because no, it, they it almost so seems like Brian Hill is more of the receiving back. He had a crucial drop against the Bears on Sunday that he would have picked up a first down and potentially even ice the game. Um, Thanks, but, Brian. Yeah, he... he um, he seems like he's the receiving back, but I mean, they signed Gurley to a one year deal. Um, so I'm surprised they're not trying to run him into the ground a little bit more. I don't know. It, th- their offense is really interesting. They'll put up points, but it seems like it's all through the wideouts and you can't really worry about the running backs too much. If you took Gurley in the third round, it's tough to get away from him. Mm-hmm. And then for the Packers, I mean, the real question is whether or not Devontae Adams plays. If Devontae Adams plays, I think you're kind of nervous to start Lazard or MVS. If I was playing one of them, I would play Lazard, uh, given last week's performance and MVS's absolute disappearance. Um, It could be a higher scoring game. The Falcons can certainly put up points. Uh, It's a potent offense. Um, So I could maybe see, uh, you know, where you would start Lazard as a flex. Uh, outside of that, it's the Aaron Jones and Devonte Adams show. If Adams plays, if Adams doesn't play, then you're absolutely starting Lazard everywhere. Yeah, Lazard's probably a top five guy if Devonte Adams doesn't play, right? Ooh, Pretty dang close to it. That's bold. I like it, but it's bold. I mean, he was so good last week. He was, but he was I mean, he was all they had. He had twenty three point four points in half PPR last week. He got pretty much all of the targets. Um, and it could yeah, have had a second touchdown. It could have been easily 30 points. Yeah, it's true. I I do. I would not be surprised to see the Packers get up early, though, and 
them uh, running the ball a little bit more. Uh, I am a little bit surprised that Jamal Williams is getting as much run as he is. Uh, he seems like the clear backup to Aaron Jones. Um, AJ Dillon has not really done anything. Yeah, I, I'm still worried. We talked about it in the last podcast about that Aaron Jones snap percentage. Uh, he's been extremely efficient so far. He's had the, the target pass a game, passing game work is really keeping him up, but obviously you saw the touchdowns, but it'll be interesting to see if he keeps it up uh, that pace yep. all season. But uh, with that, uh, before we do transition to the uh, social media page, yeah, I know we are so over on time. The COVID thing really just kind of put a wrench in everything, but we had to talk about it. Uh, we do have some newsy stuff. Newsy stuff. Um, this isn't really I'm so afraid. No, no, don't, don't be. This is honest. It's this is like the no, most non-lethal newsy stuff of the year. I promise. Uh, okay. I just want to give a shout out to all of our listeners for listening. If you and everybody, uh, this is we are recording this on September thirtieth. We have doubled our podcast downloads month over month for the last three months in a row. Uh, thank you guys for listening to us and for keep, you know, keep on coming back and getting more of two grown dudes with beards. And well, yeah, I don't know, sitting around talking football. One of them's a complete idiot that's basically been wrong about everything. That guy. <laughs> wait, wait, hold on. Yeah, no, no, that guy. You need to wear it. Yeah, you need to buy a I'm with stupid shirt that you just wear all the time that points well, over to, to my sign. screen. Yeah. But thank you guys, uh, everybody that's downloaded and, and listened to us. We got downloads in almost 10 different countries this month. Um, it is absolutely obscene numbers. Um, we've gotten, you know, tens uh, i'll say tens of youtube subscribers as well because we're still very small on youtube uh obviously still you know growing growing the the baby as it were how how many subscribers do we have on youtube uh last i checked it was 74 but i don't know if it's gone up at all i haven't checked in several hours but that's that's unbelievable thank you so much uh you know this is this is just like a hobby for us uh, currently. Uh, it would be great if it turned into something more than that. Um, and work has been crazy. And we've gone through, you know, significant life changes and kind of going through all of it with with people that are listening and caring. And yeah, for whatever reason, like it's it's really cool and um, something that, uh, you know, I've always wanted to take over the world. And if I'm going to do it through a fantasy football podcast, then I'll be damn. I'm ready to do it. I'm in. All right. Well, that does it. Let's transfer to the social media page. Please follow us everywhere, especially Twitter. Uh, we are blowing up. We have like 500 Twitter follows. We'll take every one we can get. We are at the FF Sackos on all platforms. Please visit our website, the fantasy football Sackos.com for all of our weekly rankings, including free flex rankings. That's right. Um, I don't know. Alex, you got anything else to say? How, what do you, what do you got? Thank you. No, for I don't think so. Good. Yeah. Good. Good luck in week four. Um, I am 0 and 3 in several leagues and just sucking it up. And you look at your team and you're like, if you are looking at your team now and you're like, man, I just don't have it. Make a trade, do something to spice it up. But good luck. Hopefully we're helping you out. If you guys do have questions, uh, you know, send them to us on Instagram, send them to us on Twitter. Um, we're, we're happy to help everybody out. But Honestly, just go look at our rankings. It's on the fantasyfootballsackos.com website. Um, we have it all laid out there. So hopefully our answer would correspond with the way that we have people ranked. And again, just thanks for listening. We appreciate you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the FF Sackos.